All right, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Big Rich, Queens, New York City, where we get busy. Sunday evening business, rainy, gloomy, and windy, but it don't matter. I said we're like the post office. We still got to come through. Mob Story Season 3. Ladies and gentlemen, come on in. Wipe your feet on the rug. Throw some smoke in the atmosphere. I just lit up something called Grease Monkey. <laughs> Let me tell you right now, the flavors and the strains that these scientists are coming out with. Amazing. All right, so let's get right into business. Mob Story Season 3. Today we're going to Costa Nostra News and our good friend Ed Scarpo. Salute to you, sir, and thank you very much for putting up this story. Let's get right into business, as I like to say. Tony Green, former Bonanno Street boss, resides at Brooklyn Halfway House. Former Bonanno Street boss Anthony Tony Green Urso, 84, now resides at Residential Reentry Management Field Office in Brooklyn, according to the Bureau of Prisons Inmate Locator. His release date is June 27, 2021. Tommy Green went away to serve a 20-year stretch for murder and racketeering while he was street boss, a promotion he got after the family's official boss, Joseph Massino. Joseph Massino was indicted in 2003. Messina went on to flip wearing a wire and testifying against acting boss Vincent Vinny Gorgeous Bastiano. A disgracia! Newsday journalist Anthony DiStefano has written two excellent books about both Messino and Bastiano. Vinny Gorgeous, The Ugly Rise and Fall of a New York Mobster, and King of the Godfathers. Urso was tape recorded calling for murdering the children of turncoats arguing that it was the only way to stanch the steaming, endless flow of Bonanno defectors who were crippling the crime family at the time. It's got to stop, a frustrated Urso was recorded saying during a September 13, 2003 discussion about turncoat underboss Salvatore Vitale. Disgracia. Quote, now this one's a rat. And that, quote, now this one's a rat. That one says, well, fuck it. If he can do it, I can do it. You tell them, whoever turns will wipe your family out. If you take one kid, I hate to say it, and do what you got to do, they'll fucking think twice. How would Sal feel if I killed one of his kids? Unquote. In response, former acting underboss Joseph Camarano cautioned Urso not to do anything that could hurt the families. Then official boss Messino who was at the who at the time was awaiting trial for eight murders. Bonanno turncoat James Louis Tartaglioni wore the wire that recorded Urso's infamous speech. A disgracia. James recorded numerous discussions with Urso and Camarano. The recordings were part of a four-year probe that led federal prosecutors in Brooklyn to indict 27 Bonanno wise guys and associates for racketeering and murder in January of 2004. Federal prosecutors played Urso's tape-recorded words at the trial of Messino, the so-called last Don, who was found guilty of seven mob murders and other racketeering charges. When they convicted Messino, the feds seemed to be batting a thousand. Thanks to significant help from turncoat associate and wise guys, they were able to take down the heads of two other crime families, Gambino boss Peter Gotti and acting Lucchese boss Louis Louis Bagels De Doni. In January of 2003, Messino was arrested and Tony Green started running the show. Urso's tenure was too short but memorable. Little is known about the man's early precursor Nostra life except that he was possibly dyslexic. He moved to New York City and eventually hooked up with the Bonanno crime family. In the 1970s, Urso became a made man in the crew of Dominic Sonny Black Napolitano. Following Napolitano's 1983 murder, Urso was put in Messino's crew. Eventually, he grew close to Messino and drove for him. By 1988, Urso likely was elevated to capo. In the 1990s, then underboss Vitali grew increasingly jealous of Urso's new power in the family and attempted to persuade Messino to murder Urso based on fabricated accusations. Vitali was my biggest enemy within the family, so much so that on several occasions he attempted to have me killed by bringing false accusations against me, Urso later stated in a letter prior to his sentencing. These accusations were dismissed as ridiculous by Massino because he knew of the jealousy on Vitali's part and Massino knew that I was a loyal friend to him. 
All right, so uh, salute to uh, salute to Tony Green. At least he's back out on the streets. Good for you, sir. A salute to Ed Scarpa from Cosa Nostra. Thank you very much for allowing us to read this article. The link to the article will be in the description box, and make sure you check out Cosa Nostra News. You know how we do, gentlemen. Like, comment, and share. And listen, I was reading that book, 000, by Robert Saviano, and it was interesting. The character said, uh, a sentence or a couple of sentences that I'll never forget. He said, laws are for cowards and rules are for men. And the rule is no women, no kids, and no citizens. That That's it. That's all I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, comment, and share. Let me know what you're smoking on, and we will talk soon. Salute.